Well, I'm just so happy to be sitting here at home with one of my dear, dear friends who's really family to me. We've traveled the world over together, and finally, he visits <laughs> me in Ghana. And um, I'm sad because he's leaving today, and I just thought we needed to just have a moment to just reflect on the trip and see how you were feeling about all that you've seen and experienced. So, okay, let's start. Let's start with when you got off the plane, what did you think? When I got off the plane, well, you know, my, my, I, I had some expectation because I've been to um, Nigeria a couple of times, and then you and I went to Johannesburg, South Africa. So mm -hmm. coming to Africa was not a totally new thing for me. So, you know, I already had some of my expectations kind of in my mind. Mm -hmm. uh, Ghana is definitely not as busy or not as chaotic as Nigeria. <laughs> so, I'll be honest, I love Nigeria, but I will be honest, it was kind of um, pleasing to know that Ghana was back. a little more laid back. We're Atlanta and Lagos yeah, there is you New go. York. Yeah, there, there you go. go. Mm -hmm. So I appreciated that. Um, but you know, I, I was not shocked when it came to the, just the beauty of the kindness and the warmth of the Ghanaian people, mm -hmm. the moment that we stepped off that plane. Um, when mom and I were coming through, you know, we had all this different stuff with COVID and stuff going on, you know, it adds just a little extra stress and a little extra anxiety and I did not have a, a phone number to you uh -huh. except for your United States phone number mm -hmm. and so on one of the documents it said you know where are you staying and a phone number to that individual so I just kind of skipped it because I thought mm -hmm. well or I started putting down your number and the gentleman was there is like no no sir that won't work that won't work but I'll take care of it for you mm -hmm. and he wrote down a phone number and, and that, that spoke volumes to me because it was just like, welcome to our country. We do everything we can do to let you know that you're welcome here, that we can relieve you of stress. I'm sure he kind of saw some stress when I was going through my phone to see if I could contact you or, or see if I had a different phone number for you. Um, and, and from that point on, that, that has been the norm since since we've yeah, been here. people here, are, they love to serve. I remember, you know, I mean, my mom is from Barbados, my dad is Ghanaian, but I remember that even in Barbados, if you stopped and asked someone for directions, they would take the time to lead you to that place. And that's a, that's a co completely different cultural shift from America. I, I loved in America when I lived there, but there are certain cultural things that we do as a people here that um, I find quite endearing, quite endearing. Um, so we, you took the tour in Accra. What did you see in Accra? Ooh, well, You've one seen of the, a lot. I saw a lot, uh, but a couple of the things that really stuck out to me, number one was that incredible market. Ah! <laughs> you know, I, I have to kind of laugh because he said he was going to take us up. So you went to see Makola. Makola, there you go. And so yeah. he said he was going to take us up to, to be able to see it all. And mm -hmm. so, you know, my first mindset, seeing this, this is still some of the things that we've been taught in the States. Mm -hmm. So my mind right away thought, we're going to like drive up some hill, uh -huh. <laughs> you know, where we would be able to look from the top of the hill across, you know, this, this market. <laughs> And he turned into a parking garage. <laughs> so I was like, oh, he meant when he's going to take us up to go up into a parking garage. Mm -hmm. um, it, you know, it, it was, in of itself, it was a beautiful sight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just, just to, to see all the people. You know, I didn't see any fighting. You know, I'm from Chicago. Mm -hmm. and, and I didn't see fighting uh, um, from a distance. And even when we did get out of the car for a little bit and, mm -hmm. and, and walked. And once again, you know, I never felt threatened. I mean, maybe I felt okay to a point because, you know, Tega was with us and, <laughs> and Kelvin was with us. So there is some, you know, peace of mind that we have when you are with somebody that knows the terrain. The terrain. I 
love Makola though. You know, it's like I went there one day. Um, I found this little place that had fabric curtains and lost my mind. I redid okay. like a whole place, you know, for like nothing. And so I was so excited about that. And on my way down, voila, there was this little shoe shop. And they had like these little <laughs> slippers and they were like 20 CDs, which is like about $4 or something. And I bought two pair. And, and then I came out and there were vegetables across the street. And so I was able to get some A vegetables. And I mean, I just had, and, and you know, I became everybody's best friend on the street. And they were like, sister, sister, come, come, come. <laughs> and so I would go and I got all my, so I have friends right there now where I can go back and I can get my lettuce and tomatoes and all of that at an amazing price. And then I ventured down a little ways. Oh, I found my face powder that would have cost me a fortune in Chicago. There it was. I bought a bra. What else did I buy? I came home. I was just in heaven. All right there. All right there. At amazing prices. Yep. It's just it was. like, it's I an experience. End up getting these beads. Mm -hmm. And and what was so cool too, they just didn't sell you the beads. Right. They, they explained to you the representation of mm -hmm. those beads. Yeah, and so yeah. it was a necklace and it was a bracelet. And they said, you know, that was a, a, a traditional bead or necklace that the uh, chief would wear. Mm -hmm. So I bought several of those so the people that are on my team, the men, I could take it back and they can wear it. And they can wear it with that authority yeah. as, as, a, as royalty, you know, <laughs> as a chief. I love it. Because that's where their heritage came from. So yeah. I, I did. I really appreciated all that. And like I said, it was, you know, that market beat Walmart. Oh, yes. Hands. Huh? Down. You can find some good old shopping. I was mighty fine dining down there. And, and the people were, you know. Very sweet. Very sweet. You know, when they make sure that when you gave them the money, you know, they made sure you had everything that yep. you paid for. And they'll carry they made for sure you they put it, car. yes, in the bag. And, and I mean, in Chicago, you got to pay money for the bag. Oh. Here, you know, they put it in the bag and they wished you well. And, mm -hmm. and on we went to the next, you know, and, and I love that. So, so you, went, you went to the art center? We I'm went sure to the that art was center. Experience. It is an experience. <laughs> a little draining, partly because you know in the states we're not used to bargaining, mm -hmm. and and sometimes then when I come, I already know that that the cost of these items are so minute. Mm -hmm. um, you depending know, on what it is, some things are true, pricey, but true. the prices are definitely better than than the states. It, yes, but but the labor that that is being put into those articles mm -hmm. by far is short of what they really deserve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and and so bargaining for me is is something that was difficult until Calvin mm -hmm. mentioned to me that not only is that cultural, but when in the process of bargaining mm -hmm. is the process of developing friendship. Yes, yes. And and that really helped me change my whole mindset because see, my mind is thinking I'm trying to you know. Uh, get this product for a little of nothing where mm -hmm. I'm the winner and they're the loser. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I get this great thing and they walk away with just change in their pocket. But when he explained to me that that's actually a part of the culture and that's a part of fellowship and that's a part of de developing relationships, mm -hmm. it really did change my mindset on that. And it's actually true. You know, I went down to um, the art center. I haven't been there in a while because I developed relationships with some of the guys there. So now when I want things, I've got their number. They have mine. When they when they get things that are interesting looking, they call me and say, "Hey, I have this thing. Can I bring it?" And or they'll send me a picture, and I'll say, "Ooh, how much is that?" And they bring it to the house, so I don't even have to go there anymore. We do that in the you states know. too, but then you have to pay that that uh, uh, no, <laughs> drop off uh, fee. Oh no, 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 no! So they come and they they set up all their little trinkets, and I sit in the living room and we bargain in the living room as opposed really? to me having to go, and then. Like Derek, the painter, um, yeah. someone bought me a painting for Christmas. He brought it, and I said, I'm going to have customers for you. And so he, every now and then he drops off a free painting. And that was who came yes. yeah, yesterday and, for yes. our Yes, and so he brought, you know, so now I can call him up and say, Derek, I've got some people in town, send me pictures. Or he'll show up with a truck. And uh, <laughs> when Angela Rye and uh, Leroy Campbell were here and a couple of other people, this whole porch was filled with his wow. paintings, and they bought about 10 of them, wow. reasonably priced. 
without all the drama of going and being that, harassed that, at that, the arts. That, that, that was that a is little part tiring. It's part of the experience. Yeah, but, yeah. but when the day was over, I was like, oh, I think But I'm it's gonna... fun. But it's it is fun. fun. But it, it and, is rather draining. And in the midst of all of that, my mother, you know, mm -hmm. my mother came with me. And this yeah. is her first time, second time overseas, mm -hmm. if you don't count like a cruise. Yeah. But we went to Israel. But this is the first time that she's come here to the motherland and to Ghana. And... You know, it just blessed my heart that in this commotion, they made sure they brought over a, a chair, seat in a chair. Sure my sat. mother was sitting there. One was fanning her, and the others were like, do you need some water? Do Aww. you need some water? And, you know, by the eye, mm -hmm. coming from America, you would look at the marketplace, and you may come up with a different assumption mm -hmm. based on the eye mm -hmm. of what you see yeah. and the standards of what we see and where we go in the United States. Mm -hmm. But when you get past what you see in the eye and you, you let your heart speak and, and see, it, it is beautiful. Yeah, yeah. The it's it's a, are, an organic are experience. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and those friendships, I mean, I've known Adam now for over 10 years. You know? Well, you know, we went on, I think it was like Monday or mm -hmm. Sunday, and then there was something else that I wanted to go back and get. So I was kind of excited about going back mm -hmm. because we ran, I think, it, what's it, Adam, correct? Yeah. Yeah, and so right away when we stopped, I was like, oh, I, I know where he looks like. I didn't remember his uh, name. But all of a sudden he saw me, I suppose because I kind of stuck out like yeah. a fly in a glass of milk. But, <laughs> but he came on over. And, and it, you know, it almost was already, it gave you a little bit of, of just that, Mm -hmm. I know you, and so I know if I come back next year yeah. or in six months, yeah, well, I'm going to go look him up, and as soon as we see each other, it's going to be like family. Yeah. And, and, and he was so kind that you know we were hot, mm -hmm. and we were getting ready to go, so they took us to a place to get some drinks and stuff, mm -hmm. and he brought them over to us, and, and I was taking my money out, and he was like, no, 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 mm -hmm. I bought them for you. He's a nasty, and, and that's, that's Adam. So... Those are the types of exchanges that make life rich. When we yes, talk about does. the difference between riches and wealth, our wealth is in our relationships. And, and so you can be a pretty wealthy person here even when you don't have any yes. money because of those yes. types of relationships. And, and that's kind of where I'm saying is in the States, you know, our eyes a lot of times do the initial yeah. judging. And, you know, when you, when you are able to put that away, and um, hey, Dina, we've been warming up since yeah. I've been here, and yeah. it's good to see you. Hey, but you, that's that is the beauty, and mm -hmm. and that's really a treasure that we don't have necessarily in the states. Yeah. You know, you may have your pockets of that within your small community, mm -hmm. but as a whole, mm -hmm. I don't see that in the states. Right. You know, our our kind of passion at times seems to be more the material stuff, mm -hmm. more the house, the car, the job, the the um, career mm -hmm. and in doing that you almost you, you really it's hard to have both mm -hmm. but here it's it's that I I, uh, I was talking to Christian and how Christian would say that if, if he had this amount of money and his mom would contact him because a nephew or somebody in the village needed something mm -hmm. it, it, it was not it, it, it's common to for Christian to come and give what he has yeah. to help support. So it's kind of that yeah. parable that we talk about in the States. It but we really, village. yes, but we really don't understand yeah. what that I, is. I tell them, you know, I've had people come and stay with me for a week, three months, a year, two years, four years. <laughs> I see and why. you know, some of my friends come from the States and they're like, well, what's up with that? These people need to get a life. They need to move. And I'm like, that's the difference between there and here. It's more yeah. of a community. We become family and people take care of one another. Whereas, you know, if, if you fall on hard times in the States and you go and stay in somebody's apartment after a week, they're asking you, uh, when you leave? That's right. Or are, are you, you going to start, start a, paying a, with the bills? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's a completely different mindset yeah. where it's much more organic here and people it just... Is abide together and they and they look I, out for one they another. look out for one another and that's when you find the secret of blessing in relationships you know um it's it's not just about you giving them something they actually probably end yes. up giving you more than what yes. you gave yes. so it's really important to understand the value of relationships 
And uh, even here, like when it comes to people getting married, you can't just jump up and get married. You got to go through the family. You got to get some amens before you do that. <laughs> They've got to have a family meeting, you know. Um, and if you decide you don't want to be there anymore, you got to go through the same route. You can't just say, I'm leaving. You got to let the family know. And they've got to have meetings and counsel with wow. you. And Oh, yeah. You, you, If that principle or culture was put in the United States, I just wonder how many less broken, hurting children and adults we would have yeah. if, if it was more of a, you know, a family community. Uh, yeah, people here will get in your business. That, that that's for sure. Um, you know, so you do. Uh, you've got to go through. You've got to go through the protocol of the family. And that's that's to do that's very different from us. And I think there's a safety in that. That's, there's a that's, huge yes. safety in there that. Is a... People live in their family compounds together. Um, you know, until they do something different. So you've got a place to go. Um, you might not want to go there, right, but right. it's there if you right. really do need it. You know. So um, that's and, that's and I also. Did, I did see some of that, you know, because I grew up in southern Minnesota mm -hmm. in, a, in a, a community or in a small town where we did not have much outside of our own kind of Scandinavian like culture. Mm -hmm. And so in the inner city of Chicago, I learned really quickly with my with the youth that I was working with, you know, a knock on the door and you'd open up the door and it was mm -hmm. four or five youth. And yeah. I'd be like, oh, uh, and, and they would come in and and hours they would and hours and others would come mm -hmm. and so I, I it, it's you it's it's fun for me because being in an in this in this in Chicago mm -hmm. in the African-American community where I resided for 27 years when I come to like Ghana when I came to Nigeria I see elements mm -hmm. of that culture the gene pool is deep that it's yes the it's gene still pool there, is, yeah. is deep like us being late <laughs> CP <laughs> time, correct? CP time is Ghanaian time or whatever, you know. But anyway, let's 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 move on. You we talked about you um, going to the art center. You yes. went to Jamestown. We went to Jamestown. Tell me about Jamestown. What were your impressions of Jamestown? Wow. Again, I had to get past what my eyes were seeing, which were affecting my heart. Mm -hmm. I saw a lot of poverty there mm -hmm. seemed to be a lot of poverty more than what I saw necessarily here in Accra. Mm -hmm. I might have, you know, on the way to Cape Coast, I might have seen, you know, a village or so that mm -hmm. we went past. But now those people but don't think they're poor. That's so right. Now again, that's our right. standards have to be that's, adjusted. That's right. Because uh, village life, people are very happy. There, that's exactly right. And they have right. far less drama and trauma than what we have. Th yes. So, so again, that's where I was saying when uh -huh. you get there, you first have to work through that kind of initial yeah. judgment that comes to your mind mm -hmm. or that they're not. and so I I was really blessed because the gentleman that then kind of took us around in Jamestown took us to the the hidden tunnelways mm. where at night uh, the Africans were taken to the fort um, and they, they had these tunnels, and so he moved boards, and we were able to go down there and see some of that. Uh, we went to the auction block, mm. where, again, there was this wall, and how the slaves, when they were taken, then they were placed there. They were People would walk around to bid on mm -hmm. the individual that they wanted to purchase. Mm -hmm. And then they were taken down that tunnel to then to the ships. Uh, I think I think a lot of my emotions are still kind of numb. Yeah. I, I I think I'm still numb because there was so much to take in. I kind of feel like God is kind of His grace is kind of protecting yeah. me right yeah, now yeah. until I get home, where I will really to begin to process all. everything that I saw. But again, where you would initially look and think you saw poverty. Mm -hmm. We journeyed back into the guy that gave us the tour, where he is personally taking care of at least 37 plus kids mm -hmm. where their homes were in a certain place and then those homes were tore down for the fish market or the fishing. Mm -hmm. And the smiles and the joy mm -hmm. and the laughter and the strength, mm -hmm. the resilience, if I want to say, re I, I guess I shouldn't say resilience because I'm thinking resilience where you're coming from down under or coming from a hard time, that might not be the right word. 
to see that they didn't have much when it came to games or TV mm -hmm. or toys or whatever, you know, we would have thought would make you laugh and enjoy life. They, they had more joy and smiles and laughter on their faces and in their hearts and, and amongst them than, than we do. And, mm -hmm. you know, and, and so that really, that really blessed me when I saw the kids just excited to see us come in there, yeah. <laughs> you know. Um, I enjoyed that. And then he took us to the youth center. Mm -hmm. And it was at this youth center where we, we went down to see the, the tunnel. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was so blessed to think here this was a tunnel that was leading people into captivity at mm -hmm. some point. But today... There was a basketball court. Mm -hmm. There was a boxing ring. Mm -hmm. And we got to go in there and see these young men and ladies boxing wow, and, cool. and practicing. And, and, and then there was a gym here. And, and so that, that brought me joy just to think at one time this was a place of like oppression. But now this was a place of, of just building up the, building young. Up the young people. Uh, then he took us around to like this art center and they called her mama mm -hmm. and we came just it was just me and him I think Tega was with us mm -hmm. and she was sitting in this chair and, and I gotta be honest her accent was so strong I wasn't able to understand everything <laughs> she was saying but I didn't need to understand everything she was saying mm -hmm. because the joy and the excitement and the welcome to me and to Tega was so evident so she sat there she sang a song oh. And then at the end, she's like, boom, boom, boom. And she just laughed. And, you know, I could have sat there mm -hmm. and just listened to her speak, even though I might not have been able to understand everything <laughs> she was saying. Yeah. But just the joy of her sharing some history. Mm -hmm. And then she talked about, you know, where every year, I think she said like the first of August, the youth of the community would come and then she you know she pointed and showed us the artwork oh yeah they have a big festival a big there. festival yeah. and so yeah. then we went to the backyard and we saw where the paintings were on the walls mm -hmm. and on the fence from the year prior mm -hmm. and phenomenal work mm -hmm. phenomenal work yeah. and and they said this they said you know our kids may not get the greatest education at this point but we see their gifts mm -hmm and we utilize and we empower these young people based on their gifts and yeah. one of them was this art yes, yes the other one was the boxing yeah and then there was a young man out there playing basketball and so it was just fun to to kind of run a little bit on him with him on the court but so now let's move on let's move on to um we went to cape coast we went and, to cape uh, coast there was a lot that we saw there there went was to a lot there too you saw the fishing villages where they bring in the fresh fish in the morning. Yes. Um, you went to Asin Manso and you also went yes. to Elmina castle, castle, which we like to call dungeon because yes. what was a castle about it? It was, you know, another fortress where slaves were, future slaves were housed until they were shipped out. And then there so, was another castle as well that yes. we didn't go to. But Elmina. I, Elmina. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You went to Elmina. Yes. But you didn't go to Cape Coast Castle. Correct. Yeah. So now, um, let's start at Austin Monso. How did that feel? What did you think? You know, you're, you're, it, it's kind of like the Holocaust. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you read a little bit about what took place um, during the Jewish Holocaust. Nina, come here. Uh, but then, when I actually went to Israel mm -hmm. and you began to, or even the Bible, you know, you read the Bible, but then when you go to Israel, you get there and, and every step of the way, you are amazed at how it comes to reality, yeah. how it comes to life, which your mind really can't even, you kind of have your own perception. Mm -hmm. 
you know, when you read the Bible and Jesus, you know, stood mm -hmm. and, and spoke to the mountain. But and then you get to stand there and go, wow, he stood right here. Exactly. Amazing. And then you thought, well, how did he speak to a multitude of people? But then when you got to Israel and he was on this boat on the Sea of Galilee the and echo. they said, this is where the echo went. Yeah. Oh, it was like, oh, my God, this is how it happened. When I went to Israel and then I saw the devastation and I saw the tomb of, of the Holocaust, the guy uh, from Schindler's List, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it really hits hit you. you. Yeah. And so when we got to the last bath, I had never heard of that. Mm -hmm. I had, I'd really never heard of the dungeons. I'd mm -hmm. never heard of the castle. When you, when you think, you know, growing up, I think of the slaves, all you think about is them on a ship that landed. Yeah. You, you really don't know anything of the progression of what took place even before that. Right. And, and so the last bath was something that I, you know, had never heard of. And the gentleman that gave us the tour and we went and there was a weed. And he said this was very important to, to the captives that were trying to stay hidden. Um, and, and so he, he said he brushed it and all of these leaves folded up mm -hmm. and he said that plant wow, saved thousands and thousands of people's lives. Mm. You know, and it just reminds me how, you know, just God was still, even though he seemed so unfaithful at that moment, how mm -hmm. he was still faithful to, to people because if they came out of their hiding or came out of the caves and they saw that the plant was folded, it could have been an animal, he said, but in most cases, regardless if it was an animal or if it was those seeking to find them, they knew somebody it knew was something was around and they stayed hidden. Mm -hmm. um, and then we walked down and then we got to the river. River, yeah. And he shared about all of the things that the... that the captives would go through. Mm -hmm. To, to pretty much determine who would be strong enough to not only endure the journey, but to be strong enough to work once they landed. And, and he shared that over here in this one part of, of the river, it, it was not, it was kind of just sitting water. Over here, it was very, uh, the current was very strong. And so they would take their bath here, but then at times they would, if a slave or a captive would try to run, they would shoot them. Um, and then the blood would, of the river would turn red and it would even bring in the crocodiles. And through the crocodiles and through their shooting, it would eliminate what they thought would be those that would not make the journey. And then he said some of them were even wounded and when they would come out, they would still have them do certain routines to test their strength. And then at that moment, they would be auctioned. And then they would be branded yeah. to who purchased them. And then they would walk another 35 miles just to get to the, to the dungeons. To the dungeons yeah. And some of them walked up to 300 miles barefooted to get to the last bath. But the beauty that I also saw was on part of it, you could see all this beautiful sparkle like gold. And he said, that's actually gold. But because of the site and because of the ancestral meaning, and it's basically a burial memorial that the gold is not harvest. And, and it just reminded me that all those individuals were still precious gold yeah. in the eyes of God. Yeah, yeah. The resilience, the resilience of our people, and uh, hmm. there's a purpose in it. Sometimes we don't understand or know what that is, but um, he's also blessed us to excel all over the world. And that resilience is still yeah. evidence yeah. when you look at the United States, States even just with the current yeah. well-known shootings of George Floyd and them, yes, that exactly. the resilience of, of the African Americans in the United States, not even for revenge, mm -hmm. but just for freedom and value. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. That, that was powerful. And then from there, they we went, went to, to the castle. castle. Yeah, and uh, uh, your I, thoughts there. Some of the things that, that stick out to me, I mean, again, there was so much, and we'd be here sure. for hours oh, yeah, yeah. and hours. So when we, went to the, when we went to the castle, you know, from, so we left the river of the, the uh, uh, Asin, Asin Manso. Asin Manso. 
we left there and then we went to the castle. And so, you know, there's so much to see that again, we would be sitting here for hours to share, but, but I would like to share a couple of things that really stuck out to me. How the one dungeons were just for the female captives. Mm -hmm. And the tour guides shared that they would be locked up in there sometimes from three weeks to three months, depending on whether the, the ship Shift. had just left and they admit, just missed it. So it was like a month and a half there and a month and a half back. But while the captives awaited the next ship, that these ladies were all in the same area. And, and he reminded us that they were not released to go and take a bath. They were not released to go and use the washroom. Yeah. They were not released if during that time they had their period. monthly period. And that all of that, besides, you know, all of the other, Excellent. yeah. yeah was in the same. Was all in the, they slept on it. And can you imagine, I mean, because when you go there now, you can literally still yes. smell the musk of the bodies in those tent, yes. in those dungeons. Yes. It's very sad. And then I believe it was on the third floor, you know, where the, the captain or the governor was. And when he was, wanted his appetite fulfilled, his sexual appetite, how in this inner court, where the ladies dungeons were, they would bring out a few of the women that they thought would be appealing to him. Mm -hmm. And they would stand there chained. And he would come out much like this balcony here mm -hmm. and he would choose which one he would want. And if they resisted, they, they paid the cost. Mm -hmm. But then they were brought up through a back way and he had his time with her. Sometimes I, I just don't know where a human being could do that to an animal, right. like a dog, yeah. or to a, you know, treat it that way. I'm, yeah. I'm you know, little alone a human. Yeah. So I, I guess my mind, maybe that's a good thing. My mind can't conceive what must be in somebody to be able to see this, witness this, be a part of this, and think it's all right, and think there's nothing wrong with. And they had church in that courtyard on top of the slaves in the dungeons Well, the missionaries underneath. were on the second floor. Yeah. And on that first floor were the dungeons yeah. where the men were. Yeah. So that stuck out to me. And then the other thing that really did stick out to me that there was two kind of smaller dungeons or, mm -hmm. or rooms. Yeah. And the one first room that he brought us to, it had a couple windows with bars and then the, the steel door was bars. Mm -hmm. And he said that if, if the uh, soldiers or the crewmen were disobedient and did something that they shouldn't have done or, or went to the city when they were not supposed to go, they were brought back and they were punished by having to remain in this room for a few hours or so. We walked out of there and we went right here to the next door, which was a wooden door. Opened up that door, we got in and shut the door. <laughs> I mean, and when you talk about, now it wasn't dark out yet. Yeah. But, it's but when you talk about dark. blackness, mm -hmm. there was no, no windows, windows, no air, no, no air. I think there was a small like peephole that was in that wooden door. Mm -hmm. But this was the door that was for what they call the freedom fighters. Mm -hmm. This was the door that led into the room for the captives mm -hmm. that were trying to revolt for their freedom. And unlike the soldiers' room that had windows and had air that was still moving in where they were kept for a few hours, these individuals were kept until they died. And they said most of the time they would not reopen that door until at least 80% of those in that room had died. Words can't explain or yeah. express. Yeah. You know, I can't keep my dog at home in his crate for eight hours when I'm at work without feeling a little bit of guilt. Yeah. And he has fresh water, he has toys. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I just, I, I, and then just to think above them were individuals that were calling on this good, great God that they loved. And then just to think that that was only the beginning of their journey. Yeah, yeah. That when they were on the slave ship, they were, you know, 
uh, a book my mother was reading said that they would position them in such a way that they could get the the most uh, most of them on. on on that ship. So the way that they arranged mm -hmm. them so they could fit them literally on shelves, yeah. like tied two by two, mm -hmm. and that during that journey many of them ended up being chained to Dead a de deceased yeah. family member. It's horrible. Well, there are some of us who were fortunate enough to miss the boat. Yes. And, that, and that was the other thing. They walked through that door mm -hmm. that said it was the door of no, no return. return. Yeah. And, you know, um, it makes me think of the story of Joseph, how Joseph was sold by his brothers into captivity. But he later became the one that redeemed them and saved them from famine. And so, you know, I, I know that there are a lot of people coming back now. Yes. Um, and they're bringing their knowledge, their wisdom, their innovation with them and contributing to this um, great continent. Um, I've been living here now for about 10 years. I love it. People ask me all the time. Do you miss the States? I go, I well, I miss my friends. I miss a couple <laughs> restaurants, but that's about it because it's not a crime to be black here. Right. And that right. doesn't mean we don't have our own right. issues because right. I always say that racism is just uh, a more systematic tribalism, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so we have our own issues. Uh, because but, we're people. Because people are people. Sin is sin. And sin is sin, you know. Right. So anywhere you go, there are going to be issues of class right. and race right. and whether it's and, economics, uh, economics, social, exactly. education, religion, yeah, religion, the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but I love, I love Ghana and I love it when people come to visit. I love, I feel it's a privilege to take them around so that they not only get a taste of the history, but also get to see how fabulous. Yes. Because people yes. live here better than people in yes. the States yes, for the most do. part. Yes. I mean, if you start talking about renting an apartment or a home or or even eating, you know, I eat everything fresh off the road. I stop and I pick up my watermelon and my coconuts and my fruits and my vegetables. That was an experience was in and of experience. itself. <laughs> driving, you know, because before you come, the first thing they want to do is they want to warn you, mm. don't eat any of the food, be careful mm -hmm. of this. And and yet, you ate we yourself ate everything into oblivion, you could eat. Did you? The bread, remember the did bread? Did you get sick yet? No. And we bought bread Got on sick, the way to Cape bread Coast. We, we had, bought, oh, we, we had. Hot yam chips, remember those? So you know. Um, you're, you're depressing me because I'm getting ready to leave, <laughs> and when I get ready to leave, that that is being left behind. <laughs> uh, you can it think was about it and savor it and I come won't. back. But you know, just the opportunity for that kind of organic life. It's beautiful to be driving down the highway and see goats. And yeah. their own little thing just on the side, just go. Nobody's gonna mess with them. Nobody's gonna run see over them. Kill. Yeah, there was I didn't no see any we, kill. we respect all life yes, here. Yes, we do. Yes, you do. And so it's just a wonderful experience, and, and I, I want to encourage people to visit. I'm going to be doing oh. tours at the end of the year. You're going to be bringing, be people, bringing back. people as well. Um, you know, so it is. It's you know, some other people were here a couple weeks ago. My cousin has a chocolate factory. Oh, we went we there and some made chocolate. chocolate. Oh, the bought, cocoa beans, oh, the coffee. My, my mother bought. This was Wonderful. my mom's first experience, and I can already tell she's very emotional about going. Yeah. And and she said, you know, the people she has met mm -hmm. has absolutely touched her life. Oh, I'm glad. I'm glad yeah. you had a great experience, oh. and I'm looking forward to many more coming and experiencing this here Ghana, which has an eclectic mix of old and new, of village life and yeah. cosmopolitan life. Yeah. Fabulous homes here. Real yeah. estate appreciates at 100%. Yeah. Um, great in, uh, opportunities for many investments yes. here. So come, Aquaba. Oh. I'm telling you ahead of time. Aquaba, you, you are welcome. You would never, ever regret it. I no, say. You'll won't. never regret it. And I haven't had one friend come to visit that has not returned. So I think that's a good praise report. That, that speaks. We Thank didn't even you. talk about the fashion. Fashion. Oh, oh my gosh. Clothes. Fashion. Uh, jewelry. You, Let's not forget that. Do you think you can that. get a t-shirt like this in Chicago? Mm, in well, you pay something. That's what I mean. But but the. Yeah. 
Anyway, that's it. We're going to stop because it's just too much. Too much to tell. You just need to come and see. You got to come for, for yourself. yourself. And we, if we gave them everything, then they wouldn't need yeah, to come. So right. we're just giving you a little bit of a tidbit. And if your appetite isn't wet, mm -hmm. something wrong with you. Something wrong with you. <laughs> oh, we didn't even talk about the food. The food. Let's not even get started. Foo-foo? Oh! Ah. <laughs>